I love your name, by the way, man. You just have you not you naturally have one of those names, Wes Davies. Like it, it's a perfect YouTubing name, but it's like you got a Hollywood name, man, Wes Davies. Thanks, man. I don't think yeah. nobody's ever told me no, that. No, you totally do, though. No, 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 totally you do. a giant hoodza. That was exciting to see. This guy looks like he stepped out of a time portal. It's very exciting. What is the greatest challenge that you've ever experienced in your life? Any kind, any kind of mm. great, hardest, most challenging thing in your life? I think when I was around 29 or 30 years old, I was living in Ottawa and it was winter time. I was waking up super early for my job, but it wasn't a job I loved. And I just didn't quite know what I was doing with myself. You know, why am I waking up at this ungodly dark cold hour to go to a job that I'm not in love with, uh, you know, I wasn't really making good money or anything like that. And I just had to ask myself, what am I doing? What do I want? And I think the challenge came from doing something about that. Yeah. You know, realizing I wasn't in the best spot. Yeah. And then making a huge change. I mean, I moved to Taiwan. That's kind of what led me to move here. How long have you been in Taiwan for? It's a bit of a complicated journey. Because right after university, I moved here for two years. No, I lived in Jai the first year, and then I moved to Taichung the second year. Oh, cool. Okay, this is your third city that you've lived. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, I moved back to Canada for seven years, and finally decided to come back to Taiwan. So when you first came to Taiwan, how old were you at that point? Twenty-two, I guess. Did you see Taiwan differently the second time versus the first time? I did. The first time I came here, you know, fresh out of school. Yeah. I was in adventure mode. I just okay. wanted to party and meet new people yeah. and explore Taiwan. Everything was new. I'd never been to Asia before. I remember saying every single day I see something I've never seen before. The second time seven years later? It was more about realizing that Taiwan is a good place to work and so live. Good. Like, more, more of a mature outlook on it. Like, yeah. I just realized that this is a great country to live in and uh, it's safe and it's easy in a lot of ways. It's convenient, but I just yeah. knew that I would be comfortable and happy here. And what year did you officially start making YouTube? I mean, it was before Taiwan, right? 2017. Yeah. 2017, okay. And what inspired you initially to start a YouTube channel? I always knew about YouTube, but I always thought it was just a place to look at music videos and cat videos. <laughs> totally. And then somewhere around early 2017, I found a couple of vlogging channels, like travel vlogging. So I got pretty focused on that idea. So I saved up for a GoPro. I started vlogging in Ottawa, oh, cool. where I was living at the time. And then I moved to British Columbia for a couple months, stayed with my brother, and then I moved to Taiwan. And you were on a farm at some point? An organic farm, yeah. That's so cool. So what brought you to the organic farm? I ran out of money. <laughs> okay, well that's a good reason to go to a farm. Uh, so they have a program called Woof Canada, okay. Willing Workers on Organic Farms. Cool. So okay. they give you room and board, and you just work for, I think, six or seven hours per day. And you get free food, I imagine, Free food, right? free accommodation, and you get to meet all kinds of wonderful people from all over the world who are also volunteering. Yeah, it turned out to be an incredible experience. And, and probably challenging, like farming is not an yeah. easy Waking gig. up super early, farming, you know, farming, weeding, planting seeds, uh, even building stuff around the property. He was building tiny homes. Oh, cool. So, did like you learn around. a little bit yeah, about tiny yeah. home building yeah. as well? Yeah, we Then did. you need to talk to my wife another time because she's very interested in Is living she? in a tiny home. Okay. So, hopefully with me. We'll see what happens so, <laughs> yeah, with me. Do you meditate or have you ever meditated? It's something that I've been interested in lately. Yeah. I have never really done it before. If you just committed to five minutes a day, mm -hmm. 
it, it would have a great impact just on your on your mindfulness, but like you'll feel calmer. Um, and you do get inspiration from sitting quietly, focusing on your breath. Mm. My brother started doing it fairly oh. recently. And okay. he has nothing but good things to say. He says Do it you? relaxes him. Yeah. Puts him in a more positive mood. He does it in the morning. Yeah. So if he finds for the rest of the day, he's a little calmer, more relaxed. As you said, maybe more mindful. What is your favorite food in it, Taiwan? In Taiwan? Yeah. I really, people are surprised when they hear this, or I should say Taiwanese are surprised. I like that mala yashi chou tofu. So spicy duck blood. I don't it's know like that It's like a spicy one. duck blood soup with oh. chou tofu inside. Oh, you like the like the okay the liquid chodofu, the the soup, the soft soup one. Yeah. Where you went on your island tour, which is called a Huandao. A Huandao. I think it means Circle Island. Okay. Huandao. How long did it take you to do your Huandao? It took me about two and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah. What was your favorite place that you traveled to in that time? Hmm. Definitely the East Coast. From the moment I left Kenting all the way up to when I left Geelong, basically. That whole stretch of the East Coast was You incredible. loved the whole thing. Yeah. If I had to pick a place? Yeah, one place. You know what, Jiban was really cool. It's a, it's a small hot spring village. Okay. Just outside of Taidong City. Jiban. Just super peaceful. These kind of rickety old hotels that you could, you could sense that maybe in the 70s or 80s there was a big booming oh, tourist cool. Oh, I love those kind of places. Yeah. But now it's a little run down. There yeah, aren't so many yeah, people. Yeah. Did it have air conditioning that was in like a table next to the bed? Was it like those kind of old? Oh, yeah. oh I love that. Yeah, the light switches are all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah was... I love those kind of. Those are, like there's something re retro. Mm. Like just you go back into time when you yeah. go into those places, and you could just see the this heyday somewhere in the past that's not there anymore. It was neat. When you're making videos and content, do you sometimes find it hard to separate? making the content to share with the viewer versus having the enjoyable experience of the content. I've thought about that a lot too, especially recently. Sometimes I get that feeling that I just want to be here yeah. and sort of enjoy myself and just check things out on my own accord, not necessarily feel like I have to film everything. And that, that really was apparent in the airplane video. And I had my Insta360, I had my GoPro attached here. Oh my God. I had my camera in the other hand. Yeah. And I was just madly filming the whole thing. And then I remember when the plane landed, suddenly I thought, you know what? I didn't actually take a single second up there to enjoy being up in an airplane. Was I on an airplane? Right. I mean, the footage looks great. Yeah. But I didn't take a single moment up there to appreciate the fact that I was flying in a small airplane above volume. I think you just have to be more mindful of doing that. Just take a, mo a minute or two when you're out there filming. Just finding a healthy balance, I guess, <laughs> with videotaping. First thing I noticed about you, which is what drew me to your channel and made me subscribe like instantly was, I feel like you have this infectious positivity about you. Do, you. you. do you make an effort to be positive or is this a natural West <laughs> thing or, or, or did you make it, do you make an effort to try to be a positive human being? I, I think in general, I try to look on the positive side. I think both my parents are very positive people. Everyone in my family is super positive. I think I just grew up in that atmosphere and I find it, it's mentally draining to deal with negative emotions yes. all the time and it just brings you down, makes you tired. So I find if I just have a nice sunny outlook on life, whether it's in real life or on the videos, I just feel better. I think it's yeah, well being in a state of gratitude, yeah. right, which is so important oh, yeah. and I think a lot of people they just are not in the habit of being in a state of gratitude and then that kind of brings them down they don't even know they're bringing themselves down and if you just catch yourself when you're being negative and, and switch it to a positive outlook, even if you don't feel it in that moment, your brain will eventually start to adapt to the concept of being positive and grateful rather than being negative and this is what I like about your videos. You always have these little nuggets of wisdom and <laughs> advice. It's important really. to me. Yeah. Which city on your Wandao travels had the worst, my wife wanted me to ask you this, which city had the worst traffic? Easy one. Well, there's two answers to this question. Number one, for some reason when I was in Elan, huh. traveling between, what is it, Elan city and Luodong. So there was some kind of light problem. People drive very, very locally. You know, no helmets, that kind of thing. Even though I love Elan, I think it's a beautiful yeah. You went back in time though, it was like the Wild East. 
And the other part of the driving I didn't really like was on the west coast. Yeah. Basically from Sinshu to Taichung, that okay. area up, up there. Yeah. It's not really meant for scooters. Like, you're driving on these sort of highways, huge trucks just barreling right past you. Huh. Almost blowing your scooter over. It was a little bit scary. What did you have with you? Just, like, you had your backpack probably with all of your technical Clothes gear. Clothes on my backpack and then my big camera bag down on my feet. I felt like a hermit or something, you know, traveling salesman just town to town. But you must have met a lot of, like, Taiwanese are really friendly. You must yeah. have met a lot of interesting people. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Hualien, I met the pilot of the plane. Uh, all the hotel staff was super friendly, so I would chat with them whenever I could. I got a bit lonely, to be honest, if we're being honest. It was a great experience, but if I do it again, I would like to travel with some people again. All right, if you don't have someone else in mind. That'd be fun, man. That'd be fun. Obviously, in light of the pandemic going on in the world, foreigners like ourselves have not been able to think about going home lately. I mean, we could go home, but it's not a comfortable time to go home. Do you miss home? I miss home so much. Uh, I went home last Christmas, mm -hmm. and it just felt so good to be with my family again, my friends. Yeah. See the snow, you know, Christmas time is sort of that got that magical feeling in the air. Uh, and I was really hoping to go home this year again for Christmas, but I just don't think that's gonna happen. So, in an ideal situation, you would go home once a year during Christmas time? Yeah. Ideal, if we're talking ideal, yeah. once at Christmas and then once in the summer. Yes. That'd be perfect. Because those are the two best times to be home. Yeah. Totally. Because you want to appreciate snow, because we live in Taiwan where it's hot, but you want to be somewhere in the summer that isn't as hot as Taiwan. Uh, what do you miss most about home? I mean, family, obviously. Besides the obvious family friends, yeah, I just miss the, sounds weird, but the bigness of the sky yeah, yeah. in Canada. It just yeah. feels so wide open. Space. Space. I mean, even just to drive to the next town, sometimes it'll take you 45 minutes, an hour, and you're just going past empty fields and forests, lakes. So if you were in your perfect place right now in Canada, in your hometown, can you describe in a few sentences, what does that space look like in your mind? Kind of rolling hills, okay. covered in sort of wheat fields or corn fields, uh, big open blue sky, uh, chilly at night, but nice and warm during the day, rivers, lakes, a little cabin, you know, just have a nice little hammock and read a book. That'd be perfect. Who or what inspires you the most in your life? I remember when I was quite young, maybe 20, I read a book called The Alchemist. Ah! You read that one? I love that book, yeah, yes. I've read that a, a bunch of times since then. I knew we were kindled spirits, okay. Yeah, but that was the first time that I sort of woke up to the idea that your mind yeah. can I mean, your mentality can actually influence the whole world around you. Everything. Everything. And it's true. I mean, if you if you want something, yeah. just put it in your mind, think about it in a positive way, yeah. and work hard, and usually that thing will come. So I have a journal where I write down things, and one of the people I wrote in my journal was uh, Interview Wes Davies. Look at this. Yeah, like that was months and months and months ago, mm. but I watched your show and I was like, I really want to talk to him because I think we, we are in a lot of ways on the same frequency with the positivity and stuff and so I wanted you to contagiously infect people in a positive <laughs> way. It's such terrible words to use right now. <laughs> Wes, I really appreciate it, your time. Of course. Because you are this guy's literally going all over the place all the time and we've tried to meet a few times and finally you had a moment. I was in Tainan yesterday, I'm going to Orchid Island tomorrow. This is my little window of opportunity right now. If you haven't already subscribed to Wes Davies, please subscribe to him because he's a good, honest, wonderful human being. I would appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Please subscribe to me. I appreciate all your support, and I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. I will see you tomorrow, and thank you for watching Wes Davies and Cole Fogel on A Healthy Balance. <laughs>